you know what? That pen is really holding up to the markers. So that's actually, that's actually nice. So you can actually go and get five below markers and use your five below pen and it doesn't smear. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Is It Worth It where I go around the world and the internet trying to find art supplies that will make your job just a little bit easier or make the experience just that much more enjoyable. Today we are going back to Five Below because they are absolutely killing it with all these art supplies recently and you know what, I went there and I found this. So these are drawing pens and I have done a couple pen reviews before and I'm constantly looking for new pens but these are $3.25 for five pens and I'm very curious to see how these are gonna hold up especially against the five below markers to just see if they can hold up not smear and actually be a really good source for inking pens and you guys know I am not a fan of inking so this one is gonna be a true test to see if this is actually worth it Come on, let's go check it out. Okay, so as we look at this box, I mean, it is nothing special, right? It is a paper box. It does have a nice design on it, right? It's got a little bit of gold leaf on there, so it does look fancy, but in all reality, it is just a paper box, right? Uh, I think that it's really cool that it has this five-day drawing prompts on there to go ahead and get you started, so that's pretty cool, a nice little incentive to start drawing that's really cool and then <laughs> at the bottom it says superior quality now we are definitely going to test that today all right let's check these out secured with a little tape dot right. like i said nothing very fancy to this box but i think that's one of the reasons why they can actually keep the price down so that's cool So the pen themselves are held together by a little piece of plastic. Oops. All right, keep those over there. <laughs> All right, so the, the pen itself, it does feel very, it's very light and it feels very plasticky, right? Like it feels like it's cheap, <laughs> but you know, it's got, I mean, it's sturdy, right? Like it, it definitely feels as though it's a, a sturdy pen, but like I said, the feel of it, it's definitely a cheaper plastic. So you, know, you definitely feel it, right? You definitely, definitely feel it in your hand that it feels like a cheap plastic. It does have a nice clip. Let's see. The nib itself though looks really good, right? That's, that's a fairly, that's a very nice nib. Hear about the snap. It's got a nice little snap to it, All right? Okay, check, it's a pen, so it better have been able to do the cap test, All right? So the cap fits, all right? And we got a, a, a 0.2, a 0.4, a 0.6, a 0.8, and a one. So a nice variety of sizes. That 0.2 nib looks very thin, but I think that any 0.2 is gonna look thin. All right, so these pens, they look, they look like regular pens. They look like they'll be nice, All right? Brush pen, ooh, uh, that brush looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty good brush. We'll see if it's a soft or a hard brush in a second, All right? So, let's go ahead and see what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the smallest nib. See how that flows. Ooh. Okay. So the small nib, the ink is not, it doesn't flow out when you're going very fast. Oh, look, ooh, warming up. But yeah, so you can, you can see that the ink pools here and here, but as you pull it across, the flow of ink, I think it's because the nib is so small, you don't actually get a lot of, you don't get a lot of consistency with it. So it's really, 
this the small nib is definitely going to be something that you have to use you know slower slower marks to allow for the ink to actually flow out of the nib so the 0 2 or 0 0.2 is definitely not something for when you're trying to do speed because it just cannot let out enough ink even after warming up it still gets a little light as we move through it so yeah so the the zero the point zero or the point two is it's all right i mean when it crosses over each other it doesn't make too much of a difference as far as the ink goes but like i said the the flow on that is a bit of a problem for that if you you definitely got to go a lot slower if you want to use that so i guess for great details and stuff like that it would be really good but if you're trying to do some sketching or stuff it it's always going to have this faint line that goes through it so moving on to the point four. Oh, this one actually allows the ink to flow a lot faster so you are getting a lot more ink out of it and what i like about this pen the point four is that it doesn't actually pool at the tip unless you kind of leave it there but if you put if you're already moving when you put the nib the pen down on paper it actually flows very very nicely out of it the lines don't seem to be too much thicker from the point two to the point four so in my opinion if you were going to start using these you would use the point four the ink is a lot richer it's just because the nib's bigger so the ink can flow out of it better but it's still no it's pretty good when it crosses over it doesn't give this the idea that there's a whole lot of color shift between the two so that's really good I mean it flows nice okay point four go to the point six This one's having a bit of an, an issue. Might need to just warm up. No. So the ink on these is, seems to be different. Even after warming up, like these gray, these look almost gray, right? It, it is definitely a lot lighter when it comes to the ink flow out of these. So this isn't working as well as the point four for some reason, like it's not as dark. And because of that, it's just not, it's not as good as it could be. Like it flows really nicely, but it is just not, not something that is holding up the opa opacity of the black as much. So it really isn't working to the point to where you would need it. So it's definitely something that I would try to do a little later like this point four really works but the point six is not where I would be at and it doesn't seem as though these lines are getting any thicker when they go through right when you go up point two point eight and so it's not flowing as much ink as it should so seems a bit odd although the point eight is definitely getting a lot more ink and it seems as if you push down harder on the paper it allows more ink to come out but to be honest the ink itself just doesn't have the opaque nature that a, a good inking pen should have and it seems like you'd have to constantly go over the line in order to make it actually black so that is a bit of an issue So now we're gonna go to the zero one, which is their thickest line or thickest nib. Ooh. Oh, so a lot of these pens, like you really gotta warm them up before you can even go. I don't know. Maybe it's not necessarily the the pen. These, like I said, it's like this one pretty much is just dead. Right, look at it. it's all the ink's not coming out of this one 
and once you once you warm it up it starts it starts moving so the ink is coming out but from what I can tell the ink itself is not like I said it's not as opaque as it should be and then it's also not flowing out as well um, because, I mean, some of them look like they're drying darker. Like, the 08 looks like it had... 08 and the 04 look like they're the best as far as the ink goes, but they're still light. It's not... They're not black, right? Like, it's not, it's not a black pen or ink. And with this pen, it's just having a hard time putting out the ink, so letting it flow... So, and it is definitely coming out more as an ash gray than anything else. So it's not necessarily a dark ink. It's not really opaque ink, which is, in my opinion, the thing it's supposed to do. So now I've moved on to the brush pen. Oh, okay. The brush pen seems pretty nice. The nib itself, it does have a split in it. Yeah, once once again once you just once you started going though it's not it the the brush pen is actually not bad but you can it's so the nib itself is very flexible at the tip and so it constantly is giving you this frayed look at the end of each stroke i mean it could be an interesting technique but no matter how you how you use the pen, it's just it always frays because and that's because it's a soft the tip is very soft. So any little fiber will allow it to just come straight up. But as you can tell, look at how much darker these are than the rest of it. So the ink in the brush is definitely opaque black. Right? Which is nice. Like that's nice, but as far as everything else, I mean, all the other ones, are they're not really black. You'd have to go over it fairly often. So, and so there's that. So I'm gonna, one thing that I'm super curious about is, is, is whether or not <clears throat> it can uphold or hold up to its own marker, right? The own their own company coming back and seeing whether or not the markers will bleed. This is one. All right, so we I've pulled some of the illustration markers, which I have said are absolutely fantastic. So if you have not seen the review on the illustration markers from Five Below, absolutely go check that out. I highly recommend these markers. They're actually really cool. Um, so now we're gonna test to see how the markers, the Five Below markers, work with the Five Below pens. And we're just taking some colors. I would say some of the more saturated colors from that set. All right, they're nice and coated. Let's see. You know what? That pen is really holding up to the markers. So that's actually that's actually nice so you can actually go and get five below markers and use your five below pen and it doesn't smear like it doesn't it doesn't smear oh well hold on maybe just a little bit on this little bit of yellow I mean and it is minute I mean you probably wouldn't even notice if you were doing some inks and stuff like that so I mean that's really nice the fact that they can actually interact with each other the pen and the markers they're, they're actually made to work very, very well with each other. So that's nice. That's very nice. All right, so we just got done reviewing the six artist pens from Five Below, and 
I think in this one you really get what you pay for for the three dollars and 25 cents that it cost for this pen set it's not it's not necessarily the worst but it's definitely not the best and one of the main things that I think is the problem is because the ink just isn't opaque. So it is like a 60%, 60-70% black. And so you're not really getting that rich opaque black ink that you would normally get from a different pen, like a Micron pen or a touch liner or even the Copic pens, right? Like I think the other ones have a richer ink. So if you're trying to do something that requires that kind of dark rich ink that we're going over pencils or you want to make sure that the markers pop and stuff like that then you might need a different pen <clears throat> the brush itself was really nice rich dark ink but the the nib itself the brush itself kind of frayed towards the end and so it would force you to actually come back in and clean things up so it's also not necessarily something that I would want to deal with so I don't think that you would want to either so as far as these pens go I think the best benefit to these is the fact that the markers just they don't interact as far as it doesn't make it bleed it doesn't affect it it doesn't make it spotty they work really well together which is a nice plus and you know the fact that the the brush ink and the nib ink is so drastically different really makes me believe that it's probably just the set that I got and that maybe it sat for a little bit and so the ink consistency is no longer the same but it's not that big of a deterrent right it is it is but it isn't because if you're okay with the way that it looks like if that black is dark enough for what you're doing then these pens are great but like I said, if you're looking for a rich, dark black ink, from what I saw, these are these are not it, right? And so that's something that you have to keep in mind. But the nib was great for all of them. Every single one of them, the nib was nice and strong, so there was nothing to worry about that. The ink flow, not so much. You definitely had to warm it up first. And then, even then, the ink wasn't necessarily the best right and and the consistency of the line so you'd probably have to go over it a couple more times but it was only three dollars and 25 cents so that is something to consider i think that it'll work just fine if you're just using it for whatever but this is this isn't even something that i would say hey you know what you should do you should go pick these up and give it to your starting artist because i mean they might not know any better but if they are interested in art these would be more frustrating than they're worth okay now you can take that with a grain of salt because like i said it might have just been a manufacturing error i don't know but from what i got these just aren't worth it so well that concludes today's episode of is it worth it i hope that you got something from it and that this video somehow helps you in the future if for any reason you have any suggestions for materials that I should review, please drop it in the comments below and I will add it to the list. If you are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe so that you know when new content is being produced. Is it worth it? comes out every Wednesday. And so I hope that you will subscribe so that you will be able to get the content every single week. Um, thank you guys so very much. And I will see you at the next video.